Coming, on the, coming up on the sports desk, head football coach Ed Orgeron sends a message to those who were affected by Tuesday morning storms. And LSU softball speaks to the media for the first time before going into the season opener. See what they had to say. Plus, sports reporter Dylan Alvarez talks NBA. All this and more, the sports desk starts right now. Welcome back, Tiger fans. Thanks for joining us. I'm Hunter Lovell. And I'm Zoyce Manners. Welcome to the Sports Desk. New Orleans residents faced yet another tragic natural disaster in their community Tuesday. Multiple tornadoes were spotted in southeastern Louisiana, but New Orleans East got the worst of Mother Nature's high-powered winds. Coach Orgeron had this to say to those who were affected by the storm. I want to express our sympathy and prayers to everyone in Louisiana and in the New Orleans area impacted by today's storms. We are all one Louisiana, one heartbeat when our neighbors need help. The Tiger family is with you, and we will be with you as you rebuild. This storm serves as just another obstacle for Louisiana residents and Tiger fans to overcome, something they know all too well after overcoming the devastating floods in Baton Rouge and surrounding areas in August. Hunter, I saw some of the videos. I'm, I'm sure you did too on Twitter. It was massive, and I know everybody here in student media and just every LSU student uh, gives our thoughts and prayers to everybody affected by the storm. Yeah, you know, especially down in uh, New Orleans, uh, I believe they had, I think I heard the number, around seven tornadoes touched down. I think in EF3, also in Donaldsonville, just unimaginable damage. You know, people were recovering from Hurricane Katrina and the, just had their the homes, floods in the summer. Yeah, and homes just destroyed again. Yeah. It's, well, LSU softball is gearing up for their upcoming season. The Lady Tigers will have a variety of talent this season after adding a total of seven freshmen to the roster. I think having so much talent this year, we're going to be able to stretch that a little longer and go those few extra games. And having so much depth at these positions, you have so many options and so many different people to play out there. So I think that, I mean, the ultimate goal is the World Series. They're definitely going to do great things. They're definitely going to make an impact. You're going to see them on the field and the lineup doing big things for us. One of my goals is just to become a leader on this team, um, really just to guide the young ones and because I've been there and just really have them understand like what it takes to um, um, become an SEC player and just become like how they can become in themselves and compete in this level and get to the World Series. I'm so excited to see our fans out there like I've we've played like fall games and everything but the audience wasn't as big as it's going to be this Friday so I'm excited to get into that atmosphere and have like pressure on me like pressure is awesome I think so I'm excited. Lady Tigers will hold their season opener at home in Tiger Park on Friday afternoon against Oklahoma State. First pitch will be at 4 p.m. When we come back, find out why LLC baseball pitcher Jared Poche decided to stay his senior season, what, he, what he's expecting this time around. And sports reporter Dylan Alvarez takes us through last night's crazy matchup between the Dallas Mavericks and Portland Trailblazers. Don't go anywhere. The sports desk will be right back. Guys, you think by now sports fans would be used to crazy finishes, right? But if you saw the Mavericks versus Trailblazers game last night, you might be second guessing yourself. Let's look at the highlights. We're just, you know, going to jump into the final minute of the fourth quarter now. Uh, Matthew's going to pass the Nowitzki for the three. Boom! Goes the dynamite. He's going to hit a three to let the Mavericks go up by one with only 30 seconds remaining. How would the Trailblazers answer? McCollum's going to hit it, pull up, drink. He's going to hit a two to put the Trailblazers back up by one. But. The Mavericks would again answer. Harris is going to get in the corner, pump fake, get under the basket, and get to the rim, young fella. They're going to go back up by one. But McCollum cannot be stopped. He's going to get back up, crossover, and one. That's going to, after hitting this free throw right here, the Trailblazers go back up by two. But could the heroics continue for the Mavericks? You have the young, young uh, breakout, Yogi Ferrell, two, Dirk Nowitzki, again. The legend hits another one, too, but the Mavericks back up by one with only four seconds left. But the Trailblazers would try their best to respond. McCollum, he's going to try his best, break free, hit a little floater, and boom, they're going to hit it again. The Trailblazers go up by one with only three tenths of a second left. Another miracle heave? Nope. The Trailblazers end up on top, 114 to 113. The Trailblazers improved to... 23 and 30, while the Mavericks 
lost. Reporting for Tiger TV Sports, I'm Dylan Alvarez. Thanks, Dylan. After deciding to return for his senior year, LSU baseball player Jared Poche is ready to work hard and possibly be part of LSU baseball history. Sports reporter Kristen Payne took to the field to get the story. LSU left-handed pitcher Jared Poche was selected by the San Diego Padres in the 14th round of the MLB draft, but decided to come back to LSU for his senior year. You know, just being from a small town in Louisiana, uh, you know, any kid wants to play baseball at LSU, and um, you know, I was fortunate enough to get that opportunity, uh, you know, four years ago, three years ago, and um, you know, it's also you know a kid's dream to play professional baseball, and you know, hopefully make it to big leagues one day, and. You know, I was fortunate enough again to, you know, get drafted last year. And, um, you know, but after a lot of thought and everything, um, you know, with all the guys coming back and everything, um, you know, we was gonna have a, you know, I was thinking we were going to have a real good year this year. Um, so, you know, I'm excited to be back. I'm happy with the decision I made. And, um, you know, I think it's going to turn out to be one of the best decisions that I've ever made in my life. In his last season, Jared Poche has the opportunity to make LSU baseball history. Poche is the only pitcher in the history of LSU baseball to win nine games in his first three year, each of his first three years. I mean, this guy's got 27 career wins. So if he wins 11 this year, he'll tie for the most wins in the history of LSU baseball. What a remarkable accomplishment that would be. But does he think about it? Uh, the way I think about it is that um, you know if I do fortunate enough to get those you know 11 wins, 12 wins, that means that. Um, you know, we're having a great year and that the team's winning a lot of games. So, um, you know, if I win those games and we're winning all those games and we're going to have a lot of fun this year and uh, we're going to be really successful. What are you going to take away from the LSU program once you leave? Just, you know, the way that they treated us. Uh, they treated us so great, the fans. Um, you know, couldn't, couldn't ask for better. It's the best fans in college baseball. And, um, you know, it's something I'll never forget. I'll cherish um, each and every moment that I had. And, um, you know, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Only time will tell what the future holds for Jared and the Tigers. They start their season on February 17th against Air Force at Alex Fox Stadium. For Tiger TV Sports, I'm Kristen Payne. The Tigers are ranked in the top five of each of the main preseason polls after last season, so expectations are high. It's safe to say that it's Omaha or bust for the Tigers this season. Well, Hunter, they may have to get to Omaha with one less. Head coach Paul Maneri announced today that Bryce Jordan will be out for the season due to a season-ending knee injury. It's, it hurts the Tigers. We're going to have to see who's going to fill in at that DH spot. Jordan Romero is a guy who played some uh, both at catcher and coming off the bench last season, so um, he may have to be that guy to fill in and uh, hit, some, hit with some power. Yeah, you know, Zoe, this uh, injury is very unfortunate, but with season, you know, only a week away now, um, it's, it's next man up from the Tigers. You know, there's no time to really, um, you know, think about the injury that much. The season opener will be Friday, February 17th at 7 p.m. in Alex Box Stadium where the Tigers host Air Force. When we come back, LSU basketball has not done this since 2011. Find out what that is after the break. LSU basketball lost its 10th straight game against Tuesday, Tuesday night. The Tigers have not had a losing streak of 10 games since 2011. We're seeing, we're seeing so far, no matter how much the Tigers seem to be able to step up and play to the level of their opponents, it's just never enough. Zoe, do, do you see this season turning around anytime soon? Um, no. Well, you know, like, the Tigers shot 50 percent from the field, and Antonio Blakeney was 12 of 19 for 31 points. So if there's any glimmer of hope, it's, it's just the fact that the stats were there. 85 points against Kentucky, that's about it. I, I, I got nothing. I got nothing good. Well, Tigers will be back in the PMAC Saturday night to host Arkansas. Tip-off is set for 7.30 p.m. Well, that's all we have time for tonight. Once again, I'm Zoyce Manners. And I'm Hunter Lovell. Thanks for joining us, Tigers. We'll see you back here next week for an all-new edition of the Sports Desk.